Hello people, how are you doing? I hope you're having a damn great day. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be discussing Crystal Palace. Yes! After a lot of comments of saying, please can you do Crystal Palace? I'm finally doing them. But it's not Roy Hodgson, thank Christ for that, because his tactics would have been terrible. And that's more or less the reason why I was not doing Crystal Palace, because I just, yeah, the, the they didn't play great football, they played awful football. The, the broad spots that they have or had were down to individual bits of talent, so therefore it wasn't really worth my time or yours. Um, but right now, under the likes of the new manager, Oliver Glasner, um, they're, they're, there's a lot more to be proud of and excited about, especially if you are a Palace fan. So we're going to be discussing his tactics in FC24, of course, how you can replicate them, the instructions, the tactical approach, the tactical vision, of course, and all that good stuff, as well as the more defensive game plan that he tends to go with. Now, of course, as I'm speaking right now at the time of recording, they've recently played Everton, they drew 1-1 with them. Oliver Glasner wasn't actually involved in the, the tactical breakdown or setting up the team or anything of the sort. He was more or less in the stands and he was watching. Now, I do think that maybe behind the scenes there was a bit more of a tactical instructions and how they were set to, you know, set up against the likes of Everton. So, they, they had a, a, a change in formation. They did play the, the, the back three system that's is highly linked with the likes of Oliver Glasner. Um, but, you know, I do think that there will be a few changes and alterations. Now, essentially, I'm more or less looking to try and model the the likes of Frankfurt's tactics and their approach to what the likes of Crystal Palace have to offer. Of course, we will be adjusting a few tactics and a few tweaks here and there because, one, it's a different team, and two, they have different sets of players. So we will be going through all of that in this video um, right here right now so if you guys can please hit that like button down below it does a whole lot for the channel it helps the channel grow um, which is really great for me and and you guys as well <laughs> mainly me because you know it's, it's really something to be proud of but yeah if you can hit the like button that'd be great if you are new subscribe that'd be even better but let's hop on straight into the goddamn video so taking a look at the formation at hand I have gone with a 343 flat and I've just adjusted the positions and drag players into the positions that you see right here right now so it is going to be one goalkeeper three sense backs two dms two wing backs two attacking midfielders and then of course your one striker so taking a look at the tactics and the tactical vision that i've set for this side going forward is wing play more or less trying to attack down the flanks with those wing backs slash wider midfielders in certain moments looking to try and exploit the opposition by overloading them in those wider areas of the pitch obviously the likes of Kostic and so on ring to mind when you think of Frankfurt. And to be honest and to be frank with you guys, I don't think that the players that Crystal Palace have right here right now can really fulfill the role. So if the likes of Oliver Glasner does, you know, survive this season and he gets a transfer window and whatnot, I think that'll be a key area to try and target um, and bring in a bit more quality in those wide areas. I mean, the likes of Tarek Mitchell, I think he can produce a decent amount of attacking outlets. But I think having him, you know, consistently supply good crosses into the box, I don't think that's really what he can do. I think maybe M uh, Munoz, I think that's how you pronounce his name, I think he can do a, a very effective job. And uh, he has been very impressive since coming to Crystal Palace. So maybe he could be a, a, a good factor for the side. But I do think that that is one area that they will definitely have to look to try and um, look at in the summer. But in terms of the, the tactical vision, wing play, like I said, looking to attack from those wide areas, supply crosses to the forwards, looking to try and stretch the opposition as much as possible. As for the defense and the defensive style, it says to press after possession loss. Now, with Frankfurt, they did do a very aggressive and good job with pressing when they did lose the ball, looking to try and be very attacking when out of possession in terms of looking to try and win the ball back nice and high up the field. Now, there is something that I did pick up with, and the commentator said this the other night in the Everton game, and that was, can the likes of Oliver Glasner get the side to aggressively press, use a lot of energy when out of possession of the ball? Because for one, they don't have the youngest of sides. I mean, you've got the likes of, well, Andre Ayew. Is it Andre Ayew? Jordan Ayew. Sorry, that's the one. Um, he's like, what, 33, 32, something like that. You've got... A whole host of older aging players so it is going to be quite hard i think but eventually i will i will assume and presume that the likes of oliver glasner will get this tied clicking and firing on all cylinders left right and center in terms of playing the style of football that he requires and to be honest pressing off to possession loss is a massive side to how frankfurt set out and i think it will be a very effective style of football 
to how Crystal Palace will set out under the likes of Oliver Glasner. For the team width, however, I've set it to 20, looking to try and compact that structure. Now, more so, this is to try and affect the centre-backs. They remain very compact, nice and close together, making it very hard to break down. And this will also require your wing-backs to try and drop into those wider areas and pick up the runners in those wide sections. Maybe even try and prevent a few crosses here and there. So, more so to try and affect the back line. But speaking of which, the back line, the depth is set to a mid-block, set to 45. Now, more so, this can vary and depend. I would say that... In, in Germany with Frankfurt, I am talking about Frankfurt a fair amount. It's the only real thing that I have to go off of. But in Germany with Frankfurt, uh, they, they did, did tend to play a slightly higher line. But I would assume that coming to the Premier League, not having the sheer quality that that Frankfurt side had, I would assume that Glasen would more or less look to try and be a bit more safer, drop the line a bit more, still have that mid-block intact, still, you know, allow it to help in possession, but at the same time being a bit more cautious and wary of what the quality of the Premier League has to offer. As for the offense and the build-up play going forward, I've set it to fast build-up, looking to try and have those uh, wing-backs bomb on forward, support the attack as much as possible, but also try to move the ball a bit quicker through the lines, trying to catch the opposition out more times than not. As for the likes of the chance creation, I've set it to direct passing, looking to try and exploit the space in behind more times than not. It will be there. You'll look to try and invite as much pressure onto your back line and onto your defense, and then look to try and counter every now and then. Looking to try and get the likes of Olise, Eze, Mateta, potentially an Odson Edouard in transition into the space, looking to try and use their pace on the break. As for the likes of the width, I've set it to 85, looking to try and stretch the opposition, like I said earlier, try and stretch them out as much as possible, fit those players in between the lines, trying to exploit that space as much as possible. Of course, you are essentially going to be setting out in a 3-2-5 system with your wing backs bombing on and acting as wingers, allowing for your more natural wingers in the likes of Olise and Eze to more or less drift inside and be inside forward. So more so you are trying to fit five players along that line and you, you do essentially need to have quite a bit of width to your attacking side and outlet, essentially. As for the likes of the players in the box, I've set it to seven. More so, it will be your front three with the addition of potentially one of your, your wing backs breaking into the box to try and attack the, the cutbacks or the crosses or maybe even trying to attack the back post. As for the likes of the corners and the free kicks, as for always, I've set it to four. Okay, so moving on to the instructions, starting off at the back with the goalkeeper, Johnston, or it can be Henderson. Um, either or, I would assume that they would have the same set of instructions going forward. So for the likes of saving on crosses for the goalkeeper, you would expect him to be able to be very aggressive, come for the crosses. And I, I am very much aware that Johnston is very good, very, very good at being able to claim those aerial balls, reading the game, anticipating the potential cross into the box. He's very good at doing so. Um, in terms of saving outside of the box, you are playing a, a mid-block, and it is a mid-block. Um, so therefore, you don't really require a sweeper keeper. I do know, though, that in the builder play, when building out from the back specifically, the, the goalkeeper is very intrinsic in the builder play. So he is going to be under pressure a lot, looking to try and play through the press of the opposition. So it will be very interesting to see whether the likes of Johnson or the likes of Henderson can do that job. And to be fair, I think Henderson has a better background in terms of the ball playing skills. But overall, goalkeeper wise, I think Johnson might be the better suit for the system. Anyway, progressing on into your back line, of course, you've got Anderson, Guehi, as well as Richards. Now, this is another area that I would assume the likes of Crystal Palace would have to address in the summer, especially if you are switching to a back three system. They would have to look to try and find maybe a left footed centre back, because obviously, Richards. Um, Anderson as well as Guehi are all right footed. I know Guehi can play on the left hand side, but in a back three, you want at least a left footed player to try and balance out the, that left hand side. So, <clears throat> for their roles, the likes of Anderson, he is more of the sweeper when they've played in a back four. So, I've taken and presume that he will essentially be the center center back, allowing him to be a bit more of the sweeper out of the three. So in order to replicate that role, interceptions I've set to conservative, and otherwise, everything else is set to the balanced approach. As for the likes of Guehi, as well as Richards, they are told to step up, be very aggressive, try and get nice and close to the opposition attackers as much as possible, making sure that they don't have enough space or time on the ball to potentially pop off a shot, feed another attacking player in to try and exploit your team. So more so, you want them to be a bit more aggressive of the, the three centre-backs. And as you can see, for the likes of Richards, he has got the same role as well. As for the likes of Lerma and Warriton, they also have very similar roles. The likes of Lerma, I've set him to aggressive interceptions, only to try and replicate his aggressive nature in the midfield. But the likes of Warriton, he's more or less got the same role apart from the interceptions. 
Um, Decore as well. I think that's that's his name. Is it Decore? Um, yes, it is Decore. Um, he will also have the same role. So there's no real stru instructional changes whatsoever when you do sub in and out. So for your DMs, you want them to more or less maintain the structural integrity centrally of that midfield. Stay back while attacking. You don't really require them to bomb too far forward. They can look to try and support the attack, yes, rotating play, looking to work into those wide areas as much as possible, but more so with the likes of Oliver Glasner, when the when on the attack, right, he'll try and halve his team, more so have five players attacking, five players defending, and looking to potentially defend a, a counter-attacking opportunity from the opposition. So your DMs are going to be very uh, important to the outlet of the side, so they can more or less dictate whether the offensive freedom can be there or maybe not so much so you don't necessarily always require them to get forward for the interceptions one is set to aggressive the other one is set to normal and then finally they do tend to build out from the back very effectively but now because you have set fast build up to be on more times than not with the goalkeeper restarts and whatnot your your team tends to get higher up the field obviously if you press i think it's likes of L2, it's, it's one of those buttons, you push them and then the, it'll naturally tell the goalkeeper to bring the team back and you can more naturally build out from the back. But when building out from the back, you would expect and require a lot of support. Therefore, you would expect your midfield to drop a bit, a bit deeper, show for the ball, trying to provide a passing option for one of your sense backs if they are in possession of the ball and looking for that pass or, or maybe uh, your goalkeeper. You would expect him to be able to supply the, the midfield with a potential pass, especially when under pressure. As for the likes of the defensive positioning, I've told both of my DMs to potentially cover the central areas of the field, making it very hard for the opposition to try and play through the central areas of the pitch as much as possible. As per always, if you do require it and one of your fullbacks is out of position, you can manually drag your DM into that wide area to try and pick up the runners and prevent those crosses. As you'll see here for the likes of Lerma, he's got the same role and instructions as well. So moving on to your fullbacks or your wingbacks. The likes of Munoz as well as Mitchell, they've got the same roles going forward and backwards. So in terms of the in instructions of getting forward, you want their attacking runs to be during the attack, looking to try and be an outlet in those wide areas, trying to stretch the play as much as possible. I will also say this, the switch of play is going to be a very effective maneuver for you to potentially use. Trying to overload on the one side and switch it into the more open um, wing back is going to be essential for you to try and exploit the opposition. As for the run type, it's set to overlap, looking to try and hug those touch lines as much as possible. And then finally, for the defensive positioning, you want them to step up, be very aggressive, try and get out to that man in that wider area of the field, try and prevent those crosses from being fired into the box, or any type of uh, creativity from that opposition player. Now, in terms of what this team can do, if you do change the wing backs into left and right midfielders respectively, I do tend to think that they help support the offense a, a little bit more. So therefore, in terms of those instructions going forward, for both Mitchell as well as Munoz, they'll be told to come back on defense, stay wide, and then get in behind, looking to try and exploit that space as much as possible in behind. As for the likes of the interceptions, I've set it to aggressive, and then finally for the supports on crosses, they'll be able to get into the box a fair amount, and this is where the back post runs from the opposite fullback tend to come into play, and they tend to be a very good attacking outlet um, and support the attack a, a, a decent amount, I will say that. But I, I have gone with wing back because I think it provides a bit more of a balanced approach, but if you are looking to fully attack the opposition backline or their team if they are looking to sit back i would advise all you need to do is shift them up ever so slightly make them left and right midfielders respectively and they will provide a better offensive outlet for your side on to the likes of eze and olise now so also slightly differing roles for the likes of eze he's got a bit more of a defensive awareness a bit more of a work rate to him and therefore you're going to expect him to drop a bit deeper link up with the likes of warriton and lerma get on the ball and then drive at the opposition um for the positioning freedom you want to help him or you want him to at least try and help the likes of mitchell in those wide areas so therefore i've told him to drift wide and then finally for the interceptions i've set him to aggressive this does help with the counter pressing system that glasner will try and implement with the side. As for the likes of Olise now, he is told to have a basic defensive support. So sometimes allowing him to drop a bit deeper, get on the ball, other times allowing him to hang slightly high up the field. But the main change that we do see is the free roaming role for him. You would expect him to try and drift in and out of those wider channels and more central areas of the field, picking up the little pockets of space, looking to try and be the playmaker of the side. Of course, the likes of Eze is also very capable of doing this job, but you can't really expect both of them to do the same role. So I've gone with Olise for this, and I think he does a very effective job. 
As for the likes of the interceptions, I've set it to normal. And then finally, onto the likes of Mateta. He is set to drift wide and be a target man. I did see against the likes of Everton, he was you know, looking to link up very effectively in those wide areas. And that might change depending on what Oliver Glasner expects from his centre forward. But I don't think it's that far-fetched that he won't have a very similar role. Looking to try and support in the wide areas, use his physicality more centrally in certain moments, be a target man, link up with the players in and around him. Sometimes be just there to use his physicality on the opposition, somewhat take centre-backs out of... The, the game altogether with his you know ability to back into the the defenders most importantly though you want him to be very aggressive with the interceptions looking to try and chase down the ball or maybe even just put the opposition fullbacks or maybe the center backs under pressure with a good close down as for the likes of the defensive support i've told him to stay forward now more naturally with crystal palace i would assume that the center forward will be told to drop a bit deeper but with ft24 you want to have at least one good attacking outlet when progressing the ball forward so therefore the center forward is going to be that man so onto the defensive structure and this is more so if the likes of Crystal Palace are under pressure and they are under the cosh so I would expect the fullbacks or the wingbacks to drop a bit deep and become more natural fullbacks not looking to get forward too much and therefore they would look to try and take up this shape a 5-2-2-1. Two, two, looking at the formation at hand it is going to be a 3-4-3 flat with obviously these players dragged into the specific positions therefore it will be one goalkeeper three center backs two fullbacks two dms two central attacking midfielders and then of course your one striker now with the tactics going forward there are a few tweaks and changes to it but the tactical vision is still going to be set to wing play the defensive style is still set to pressing off to possession loss still looking to try and be very aggressive when out of possession of the ball looking to try and win it back yes but in terms of the team width and the depth, those things have slightly changed. The depth is now set to 30, still essentially what would be a mid block, but it's literally on the verge of what could be considered a low block. As for the team width, it's more compact, so it's going to be very hard for the opposition to try and fit bodies between the lines or play balls through to try and exploit your back line. As for the likes of the offense going forward, it's going to be more counter-attacking, more fast build-up. But again, no real major changes to it. It's still going to be fast build-up and direct passing. Looking to try and exploit that space as much as possible. The width is still set to 85. So when you do get forward, you want to try and have your forwards trying to spread out the opposition's back line and try and exploit that space as much as possible. For the players in the box, I've only set it to three. Not committing too many players forward. But when you do, you want at least one or two supporting players in and around that attacking third to try and, you know, score a potential fast break counter or something along those lines. As for the corners and the free kicks, as for always, set to four. So, taking a look at the instructions for your players at hand. So, starting off with the back with the goalkeeper, there's no major changes to what Johnson is expected to do. Still being able to come for crosses, you would expect him to fulfill that role more effectively when you are trying to soak up pressure with the instructions and tactics in hand. As for your three sense backs, no major changes to their instructions either, but with the full backs, the likes of Munoz as well as Mitchell, they have the same roles going forward. Told to stay back while attacking because you will have fast build up on. I did mention this last week with one of the tactics I did. With the fast build up on, it more, more or less tries to encourage the fullbacks to get forward. So you have to have them on stay back, otherwise they will be out of position and therefore you can sometimes be exposed. So stay back while attacking is going to be a thing. Obviously if you do have the ball with your fullback and there is space to try and attack, drive with them forward but more naturally their settings will be told to stay back. As for the likes of the inceptions, it's set to normal. The run type is set to mix. So again, they'll look to fill in where they need to, but more so their, their, their main duty is going to be on the defensive end. For the likes of the defensive positioning, I've told both of them to step up, looking to try and prevent crosses and creativity in those wider areas. As you'll see here for the likes of Mitchell, he's got the same role and instructions as well. So moving on to your two DMs. Now, slight uh, change in tweaks, you could say. They've gone for a bit more of a zonal approach for their defensive behavior looking to try and cut out pass ends break up the play as much as possible in front of that back five looking to try and shield them as best as they possibly can um, as you'll see here for the likes of Lerma he's got the same set of instructions also sets to normal interceptions you don't want him to be too aggressive stepping out potentially opening up a gap or a space for the opposition to try and fit a player in or try to exploit and therefore the other instructions are also set to deep line playmaker and cover the center just like with the balance instructions as you'll see here for the likes of Wharton same role as well. Onto the likes of Eze and Olise. Now, for Eze, very similar role, but with the support on crosses, it's set to get into the box. This will encourage him when on the break to try and make those runs forward, try and, you know, get into the space, get into the, the attacking area and try to score those goals. But otherwise, there's no major changes to his instructions. For the likes of Olise now, 
start tweaks as well come back on defense as well as get into the box for the cross looking to be a bit more of a danger man as well as try and help out on the defensive end of things as you'll see here for the inceptions it still sets normal and of course you still want him to have that free roaming role for the likes of Mateta again also a slight variation and tweak to it the support runs is here to drift wide you want him to still be able to drift along the back line of the opposition look to try and find that space and trying to exploit it and he will look to try and use his pace now i will also say this he's not the fastest of players so maybe a uh, potential Otson edward coming in subbing in for him when in this role and he can be a bit more of an outlet for the counter that might be a bit more of an effective tactic to use but more so you want your striker to be able to get in behind and exploit that space the interceptions are set to aggressive, still looking to try and close down the passing lanes and angles of the opposition backline, maybe even putting their goalkeeper under pressure, so therefore you would require your centre forward to be able to be a bit more aggressive with that. And then finally, the defensive support, he is going to be told to stay forward and be a counter-attacking option when on the, on the break, on the counter, looking to try and score those goals when under, under the cosh. So there you have it guys, that is how I would set out the likes of Crystal Palace under the likes of Oliver Glasner. Now I will say this, a disclaimer, nothing has happened just yet he could come in next weekend or this weekend coming up and he could play a 4-2-3-1 now it's highly unlikely that he does that because more so he's always played a 3-4-2-1 system so or 3-4-3 three, three. um but it could happen we don't know he, he might go in and, and assess the team and think you know what they're not good enough or they might not have the personnel to play my system so for now i'm going to play a 4-2-3-1 a or a 4-3-3 three, three, something along those lines they might have to do that but more so, I think that this is how they would set out under the likes of their new manager. So, if you guys can, let me know down below what you would rate this out of 10. While you're there, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, all that good stuff. It helps the channel out a hell of a lot. I would absolutely appreciate it as well. Obviously, we are on the road to 5,000, and that means, you know, that would be absolutely incredible. But, the rating out of 10, I would give this a solid 7. There, there are moments, especially when you are in possession of the ball and you are looking to progress it forward. If your forwards are not moving around free enough or they're not, you know, picking out the space, like, you do require quite a lot of the attacking out there to be, you know, held down by the likes of Eze, Olise, and Mateta. So, if they're not firing or if they're not moving enough and, you know, moving into the free spaces, you can essentially get overrun by the opposition defense and tend to lose the ball and... It, it is a bit frustrating, but in terms of the defensive outlet, they're very solid, they're very strong. They do tend to try and counter-attack a lot more, and maybe in those moments you find a bit more joy, a bit more fluidity, looking to try and work the ball down those wider channels a bit more, and whipping in crosses, that's going to be an essential element to the success of the side, the crosses from those flanks. But I think maybe with better players, like I'll always say, with better players, maybe the system works a bit better. At Frankfurt, I've really enjoyed using more or less the system, um, and I still kind of use this system... Uh, when i play a back three system of my own so yeah i would say a solid seven i don't think you can go wrong with it essentially defense very strong offensively a bit a bit you know a bit to be had but nonetheless i hope you guys have enjoyed this video and um i'll see you guys tomorrow for the next one i'm out